Coming up next on Sledhead 24-7. Discover how Skidoo is utilizing the latest XRS technology that leads to a smoother ride when the trails get bumpy. 1,500 feet of sheer madness. We're talking about the Jackson Hole World Championships of Hill Climbing. Legendary Snow King Mountain is the destination for our Ram Road Trip. We're hanging out in the pits with Lucky Lincoln Lemieux. Number 13 is learning from the best on the snowcross track. And even getting life lessons in the wild blue yonder. Those stories and new ways to find confidence on a rough ride. Sledhead 24-7 starts right now. Let's see if we can get you guys stuck. Sledhead 24-7, your show for everything snowmobile. I'm your host, Chelsea Scourge, joined this week by Jeff Fisher, our tech expert. We are coming to you this weekend from Duluth, Minnesota, the epicenter of snowcross. That's right, Chelsea. You know, we're here to watch a lot of the new Skidoos and a lot of the other brands, but let's take a look at another new segment that uh, Skidoo has, the new XRS Gen 4 platform. We're in the shop today. Joining me is Steve Cowling with BRP. We have some new 2018 ski Steve. Jeff, we're gonna go over kind of what's new for 18, suspension-wise, technology-wise there. And we're gonna talk about some of the uh, customization we can do for your sled for this year. Sure, well, let's get at it. Okay, here we have the new 2018 Skidoo Renegade XRS. What's new with this model, Steve? Well, Jeff, you remember last year we brought out the Rev Gen 4. So you've got all the great features of that where you've got the Ergo Step side panel. You've got a lot of room to move on here. It's a very agile, very light chassis, well-balanced side to side. And what we've done for this year is we put the XRS magic into it. Okay, so what that involves is a lot of suspension and some different positions for the rider. You know, for instance, the, the steering post has moved forward an inch. And you've got uh, the different shocks up front here, the KYB Pro 36Rs on the front end of the vehicle. We've got the wider running boards, which are reinforced for that more aggressive or more active style rider. So this is the guy that, you know, he's going he's gonna to go after, he's going to chase it a little bit, so he's going to push pretty hard. So we want to give that guy a little bit more room to move on the snowmobile and also suspension components that can handle his style of riding. Okay, now up front we're running a KYB Pro 36R, all right? This shock is fully adjustable, so for compression it's up here, it's both high and low speed on one knob. There's 22 clicks to adjust. Down here is your rebound. And this is again 22 clicks, softer and harder back and forth. So the guy can really tune the front end of the vehicle to what he wants for performance so far as you know, is it bumps that he's looking to, to get that day, so real bump absorption for when you're riding hard, back it off maybe for a day when it's a little bit smoother or you're riding a little slower pace. So in the R Motion rear suspension here, we've got KYB Pro 40 shocks. They have compression adjustment, high and low speed on one knob. It's easy to adjust even with your gloves on. You've got an option for adjusting uh, the spring preload also. And a guy can also look at limiter strap adjustment to get it to handle the way they want it to. Um, in the rear shock here, you've got an optional mounting hole that softens up the ride a little bit. Uh, and you've also got, again, high low speed compression on the uh, KYB shock back here. And at the back here, we've got the coupler block adjustment. Again, very easy to do by pushing in the button and turning the, uh, the coupler block. What that does is it allows you to adjust the amount of transfer coming backwards and really it's how much ski pressure you keep on the front end. That's what it does. So if a guy's got something that he wants to turn uh, a little more positively, you would move that to position number two, three, or four. If you want to make sure that it's very easy to lift the skis over bumps, you'd probably leave it in position one, which is basically an uncoupled position. This XRS Renegade's really cool. Uh, I just really enjoyed riding it this last spring, the chances I had to put some time on this machine. Yeah, Jeff, this is a machine I think that fits the way you ride. I've ridden with you a couple times. It, it really has a great suspension package, so I'm sure it's a pretty good fit for you, but you rode a lot last spring, and there's one that I know that where you live and ride a lot, one that might even fit you a little bit better. Let's talk about this Renegade Backcountry X. Okay, Steve, the Backcountry X. You know, what kind of rider would want to ride this sled? Well, this is really designed for a 50-50 rider. I mean, and a lot of people probably talk about being 50-50, um, but this is really designed for that guy that truly is looking for snow playgrounds in maybe a flatland situation where you wouldn't have a summit. 
What are some of the main key features on this sled? Well, we'll talk about the handlebar since we're sitting on it right now. You look at this and it's more of a minimalist setup on the handlebar itself. You know, there's the big control is not there like you would have on a trail sled, so that when you're off trail, you're not bumping things by accident, it's out of your way. Uh, you got the handlebar guards, which for when you're on the trail, they are gonna deflect some wind and keep your hands a little bit warmer. Sure. And then you've got a grab bar, which is again, a mountain setup. So you've got a, you've kind of a crossover setup exactly here between the mountain and the trail sleds. One of the bigger keys to the backcountry model is a new rear suspension here. It's called the C-Motion, and what it does is it combines the best of R-Motion and T-Motion to really give you that crossover suspension that works well both on trail and off trail. On the front arm, what we've done is we've got the long torque arm up front here like we have on R-Motion and T-Motion, and we've used a dual rate center spring here to give us something that settles down when it comes into the turn so that the sled still handles good when the guy gets off the throttle, gets into the turn, plants those skis. It's a, it's a real key to making the machine work on the trail real well. You know, these are two great snowmobiles, but I know Skidoo has more. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, wide lineup for sure to try and cover everybody's needs, but we're looking at two sleds today that are really kind of the heart of the market in the sense that you've got an on-trail sled like the Renegade, a little bit more tuned towards a bump bridging ability with that extra length there, and you got an off-trail or 50-50 sled here in the Renegade Backcountry X with that 146 for that extra flotation. No, these are two great sleds. Well, check out more skidoo.com to find the full line. So it just proves that new XRS in the Gen 4 platform. It not only takes the bumps, but it is very trail friendly. You can corner with ease. Make sure you check out skidoo.com for more information. Stay tuned, there's more Sledhead 24 7 to come right after this. When Sledhead 24 7 returns, discover how Rocks helps racers gain an extra edge of confidence. And from the Iron Range towns of Aurora, Minnesota to the top of the podium, the story of Lucky Lincoln Lemieux when we return. Sledhead 24 7 is brought to you by Amsoil, protect your weekend, by Polaris, terrain domination, Articat, share our passion, Skidoo Snowmobiles, what matters is what's next. And by Ram Trucks, proven to last. Welcome back to Sledhead 24 seven. If it happens on the snow, you'll find it here first. Jeff and I came into Warmelup a little bit and we found ourselves in a Shearing Speed Sports trailer. That's right, so we're checking out all the equipment in here. The one guy in particular we're checking out is the number 13 of Lincoln Lemieux. Lincoln Lemieux had a great season last year. Let's see what he's looking forward to for this year. He's a young racer in the right place at the right time. Meet number 13, Lucky Lincoln Lemieux. I'm Lincoln Lemieux, I race Skidoo for Sharing Speed Sports. You know, we got a new sled, uh, you know, we worked out some bugs. The motor feels really good. Uh, you know, we worked on the shock setup for uh, two weeks or so. Um, we got that dialed in. And, uh, you know, we've just been dialing, dialing it in the last two weeks. Uh, we, we got this thing figured out pretty good. Lincoln is learning from two giants of the snowcross world, starting with his teammate, former national champ, Tim Tremblay. Lincoln is kind of like me on the track, you know, you know he's never gonna give up. Uh, he's pretty quick on the starts. He trains hard just like me, and uh, he's really quick on the starts, and uh, we really get along really good together. We're a good training, training partner and stuff like that, so uh, it's good to have him on the team and I always push me to go faster when we practice and racing also. It's good to have him as a teammate. Right in front of him, Lincoln Lemieux continues to lead. Down the hill they come. Right Lincoln place. races for Steve Shearing, That's known for life. racing hard, playing fair, and getting the most out of and getting the most for his team. You know what's cool about Lincoln? He never gets intimidated. He'll line up with whether it's next to Tim or Tucker, Cody Cam or even a regional guy trying to jump up. He has the same mentality, he's like, I'm gonna beat them all. And that's impressive for a young kid like Lincoln. And I saw that he had the raw talent and, you know, nerves of steel, I guess you'd call it. He's just calm and didn't get worked up about anything and very nice kid, I mean, very nice family and uh, that's what we kind of attract to.
We've got four laps to go, and we've got Kate Osborne by the racetrack. Kate? Well, in talking to Tim Tremblay earlier, I was asking him about that red plate. If you have the points championship, you have a red plate. Oh! 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 Tim Tremblay off his sled. White flag out one Window. lap left to go. Sorry, oh, Kate. The white flag is out. My crashes hard right in the middle of your report. Yeah, last year at New York, uh, you know, had a really good race going on. Uh, you know, we had two laps to go, and you know, more than likely would have either won the race or got second to Tim, but. Uh, you know, I felt really good there, uh, but unfortunately we just uh, we blew a belt with two laps to go and uh, this year hopefully we can minimize those mistakes and uh, come out on top. To prepare for the season, Lincoln moved from Vermont to the small northern Minnesota town of Aurora. The Iron Range of Minnesota is the perfect place to get serious about racing. I, I love that atmosphere of the team. You know, everyone wants to win. Everyone's looking to do good. Um, they're always trying to build stuff and make stuff better. You know, me and Tim, we really want to win and do the best we can, and that's, that's what we're going to do every race. One perk of being a race team sponsored by the U.S. Air Force is the opportunity to experience the flight of a lifetime. I have to say that's probably the coolest experience I've ever done. It definitely beats riding a snowmobile, I have to say. Those things are very fast. Um, those pilots are amazing. I mean, the things that they can do while hitting, uh, you know, seven, eight, or nine Gs is, is just amazing. Back on the ground, Lincoln continues to soak up the lessons that will serve his winning ways well into what is already a great racing story. You know, I train extremely hard every year. Uh, this is my only job. This is what I focus all my time and energy on, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make the most of it and uh, hopefully get a championship. Race down the hill. It's Lemieux. It's Tremblay. And the checkers are in the air. The flames will fly for the 13th. Lincoln Lemieux has won the Amsoil Pro Open Final in Duluth. And talking with team owner Steve Shearing, these sleds are set up perfect. Both the riders are ready to go. It should be a great season. We want to wish the best of luck to Tim and Lincoln this year. Make sure you guys stay tuned. More Sledhead 24-7 to come right after this. Still ahead, hang on for the highlights from the greatest hill climb race on the planet. We're going to Jackson. But first, here's today's Amsoil Tech Tip. Piston protection is hyper critical in your engine. The oil has to lubricate, the oil has to make sure that there isn't deposits. The oil has to do a number of really important jobs in order to make sure that the piston doesn't seize. We have to lubricate it and we also have to prevent deposits from happening. So the only way to do that is test. To properly formulate the oil, you have to test. So at Amsoil, we constantly test to make sure that we're formulating the best possible product for your engine. In fact, that's all we do here is test to be sure that we're providing you with the best possible product that you can get to keep your engine protected. For more information, check out amsoil.com. Welcome back to Sledhead 24-7, your show about everything snowmobile. Jeff and I have been hanging out in the pits and uh, we came across our old buddy Wes. Yeah, Wes Selby, you know, he's wise beyond his years. The guy's been around a while, he's still a top contender. You notice one thing Wes has on his? Rocks handguards. Let's go find more out about rocks. Confidence. Now, the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. On the snowcross track, many of the top racers obtain an extra measure of confidence with rocks gear. I mean, for sure, uh, you need hand guards to, to make sure you're, you can go fast on the tracks and your hands stay warm. And uh, if your hands are cold and you cannot give her, then you're, you will be slow and you're not going to be confident. So for sure, the hand guards are helping and every, everything on the sleds uh, to make you comfortable and uh, it's going to make you faster on the track for sure. Snowcross is one of the toughest sports on the planet. Protection plays a big part in a day at the races. The handlebars are a huge uh, you know, contact point for the riders to control the slide and stay on. 
dry, you know, dry grips and warm uh, dry gloves are very important. So, yeah, without a doubt, rocks, uh, rocks makes it happen. Oh, but they, they help a lot. It uh, makes us focus on uh, just the riding instead of try to change position of the hand to don't get hit about any ice or snow stuff. So they work really, really good, and it uh, feels pretty safe to have them there. I've ran the Rox products for seven years now, pretty much since day one, so it's a great product to have behind me. You know, they make everything from ski supports to traction, a uh, nice bar pad for when I slam my head on the bar when I go huge. Uh, Rox is a good sponsor for us, you know, we're, we're having like uh, end guards and then uh, grips for the, our feet. And actually this weekend we have like new Rox uh, seat cover. So uh, basically, uh, the end guard is a must in the winter time because it's so cold. So it's kind of like uh, guard you from the wind, and especially the roofs too. Like when it's really wet or all the snow, so your hands can stay dry and like good grips on the on the end bar. And uh, same thing with the feet. You know, sometimes we got you got ice on your feet, and uh, with the rocks, uh, with the rocks that we have on the on the running board, they're just helping for the grips and uh, make sure your your foot doesn't slip. And same thing with the seat cover. You know, make sure when you sit on it, you don't go backwards and you you stay on place on the sled. So we we love the products. Yeah, I'd recommend these to any rider, any level of riding, you know, from out on the snowcross track to on the trails, you know, in the mountains, everything. They keep your hands warm, you know, keep, keep all the roost out of your hands and, you know, never like to get some ice in your knuckles, so. You know, we've been working with Rox for a long time and uh, he's got his new Protec guards. They graphic up and look great. Lots of extra protection for the hands to keep them nice and warm and dry. Super lightweight and uh, rocks uh, the whole group, especially Chris, is just an outstanding group to work with. Now you can see, Chelsea, why it's very important to have a good quality handguard on your sled. Absolutely, you got to keep those knuckles protected when you're out there on the track. To find out more, head on over to rockspeedfx.com. More to come in just a moment. When Sledhead 24-7 returns, full report from the World Championships of Hill Climbing in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil, protect your weekend. By FXR, world-class outerwear. By Stud Boy, traction with an attitude. Ziggler Cat, exceptional service, backing the best equipment. And by US Air Force, aim high. Our Ram leads us to some pretty awesome places during the season. Today may be one of the best as we head out west. Jackson Hole, Wyoming is home of the Grand Tetons and a whole lot more. A vibrant town with an old west feel that leads to endless trails in the mountains. For close to half a century, Jackson is the site of the ultimate in snowmobile hill climbing. And the ultimate agony of defeat. You got to tell yourself to breathe normally, you know, I don't even think about breathing while I'm, while I'm racing up the hill. This hill I have to tell myself to breathe because uh, one time I got up there qualifying in 800 mod and I was like, just like burnt my lungs because I don't think I breathed the whole way, the whole minute and a half that I was running up the hill. So it's just a gnarly hill that just kicks our butt every, t every year. The event is staged by the Jackson Hole Snow Devils. Back in 1975, the club started a small hill climb contest that grew and grew. Today, the four-day event draws over 10,000 fans and more than 300 snowmobile hill climbers from all over the U.S. and Canada. It's pretty awesome. There's no hill like it in the world. You can't practice for it. You just gotta, just gotta go off of instinct. Stuff comes up on you really quick and so much fun. It's like if we could just uh, practice with the hill help, we could be a lot better at it, but we only get one shot a year, so it's awesome. Earning the reputation as king of the mountain means plenty. 
at the aptly named Snow King. Jackson's a world championship hill climb, and uh, it's people bring their A game here, and it's serious, you know. And it's still, lots of friends, and and you know, good relationship between the racers. But when they're on the starting line, it's business time. You know, this is a one-shot wonder. You get one crack of the hill, and you either make it or put it in the trailer. So, super important to charge the hill and ride it like everything depends on it. Usually in hill climb racing, you're racing against other other riders and whatnot. But at Jackson Hole, uh, you're battling the mountain. You're battling the trenches, the rocks, the ice, everything you can do to get over the hill. For more info on the Jackson Hole Hill Climb, we've set up a link at sledhead247.com. Now that is all the time we have this week for Sledhead 24-7. Make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube. Who knows, you might be riding with us this season. I'm your host, Chelsea Scourge, and for all of us here at Sledhead 24-7, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the snow. That's all, folks.